Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Hills Run Red. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young boy sitting in front of a mirror, while a girl's voice sings a nursery rhyme. He takes a glinting pair of scissors and starts hacking away at his face. He cuts his cheeks off first, silently peeling the skin off until blood drips out of his self-inflicted wounds. Throughout it all, the boy never says a word. He just keeps on methodically cutting his face away, until nothing but bones and flesh remain. He only screams once he's finished. It's just a regular night for a horror movie fan, Tyler. He sits in front of his desktop computer, binge-watching Daniel's CC horror movies while doing research on his idol director, a cult horror filmmaker, who made the infamous 1982 horror film, The Hills Run Red. However, the film was pulled out of theaters because of its gory content. However, no other copy of the film remains today, and the director disappeared off the face of the earth right after he finished the movie. The cast of the film also mysteriously disappeared. As a horror movie buff, Tyler has spent considerable time researching the director and the circumstances surrounding the movie. He hopes to track down a copy of the missing film one day. A friend leaves a voicemail for Tyler, saying that he has the contact details of Alexa, the director's daughter. Deep in thought looking at his screen, Tyler doesn't appear to have heard the voicemail. Instead, he watches the trailer for The Hills Run Red. It's about a serial killer named Babyface, who wears a baby mask to hide his mutilated face. He stalks the secluded woods at night and slaughters unsuspecting campers. Tyler's girlfriend, Serena, approaches his desk and tries to distract him from his work. But Tyler is too determined to finish his research, so Serena just goes to bed alone. The next day, Tyler is filming another vlog about The Hills Run Red when his close roommate jokingly interrupts him. They go to the mall, and roommate continues to tease Tyler about his obsession with the movie. Tyler explains that he wants to know what exactly was in the movie that made it unwatchable, and why the director disappeared after making it. Roommate retorts that maybe it's better to let the film's secret stay a secret. Tyler decides to do a documentary about his efforts to find a copy of the film. He will go to the original locations where the film was shot. But first, he needs to talk to Alexa, who is said to be working as a stripper near the city. Alexa was a part of the film as a child, and the only cast member he could find now. He goes to the strip club where she works, and asks to talk to her. They go to a private room, where Alexa does a striptease for him. Tyler is uncomfortable, since he really just wants to talk to her about her father. But he manages to convince Alexa to take him to her home. As the two leave in Tyler's car, someone is watching them. It turns out that Alexa leaves in a C motel. She also tells him that if she did have the movie, she would burn it. Instead, she tries to seduce him but drifts off to sleep due to the drug she took. Tyler calls roommate and informs him that their road trip will commence in a few days, and that Alexa will help them find the film. Unbeknownst to him, roommate is in bed with his girlfriend, and she cheated on Tyler with his best friend. The next morning, Alexa wakes up tied to the bed. Tyler tells her that it's time to get serious. He will help her detox from the drugs, and she will help him find the film. She spends the next few days enduring withdrawal symptoms, until she gets better. Soon after, Alexa and Tyler, together with Serena and roommate, go off on their road trip. Serena is not happy that Tyler spent days alone with Alexa, and he tries to assure her that nothing happened between them. Afterward, he tells roommate that Alexa revealed to him that her father had a house in the same woods where the movie was filmed. The director had died a decade ago, but Tyler is hoping that there's a copy of the film still in the house. Alexa doesn't remember much from when they were shooting the film years ago, but while walking through the woods, she picks up an old discarded doll, and right then, some gruesome memories involving Babyface emerge. She is overwhelmed by the memories, and Tyler comforts her with his muscles. However, they do not notice that someone is filming them, using Tyler's camera. After a restroom break, the group drives off again. They ask Alexa about the actor, who played Babyface in the film, and she answers that it was a mentally challenged local man. On the way, they stop by a gas station Tyler recognizes from the film. The elderly lady who runs it, still remembers the director, and she tells them that while making the film, he used real blood from a slaughterhouse. Alexa suddenly remembers that her father used to take big film reels of the movie around in his car to show it to people. They'd also interviewed a truck driver, who had seen the film back when it was first shown in theaters, but didn't really have much to say. Later, they park at the edge of the woods and trek deeper inside it to get to the director's house. Along the way, Serena stumbles upon a human ribcage, with a hook embedded in it. Tyler mentions that there's a scene in the movie where a woman is torn apart by hooks tied to two tall trees, and it looks like the ribcage is at the same spot where the scene was filmed. Right then, Alexa has another flashback of her as a child, 
watching the gruesome scene in real life. The group camps in the woods for the night. In front of the campfire, they interview Alexa about the origins of Babyface. She tells them that the killer was a product of rape, and his father cut off his face in anger and locked him in the cellar. He took the face of his baby doll toy and used it as a mask to hide his deformity. Then Tyler brings up the fan theory that Babyface would often preserve the bodies of his victims and hang them in his smokehouse. But Alexa denies this. They settle into sleep, while Tyler stays up to review the footage they shot earlier that day. They were able to talk to a few other truckers, who say that a couple of backpackers disappeared recently, the latest in a long line of mysterious disappearances in the woods. But Tyler sees something sinister in another footage, a shot of someone wearing the Babyface costume in the woods. He also notices Serena and roommate cuddling while sleeping. It dawns on him that the two had slept together. Alexa sits next to him, and he tells her that he isn't surprised that they betrayed him. He turns his attention back to interviewing Alexa, but she snatches the camera and Tom massages him. Tyler reciprocates initially, but stops himself when he hears something picked up by his headphones. He stands up to look around, and someone knocks him out suddenly. When he regains consciousness, he discovers that all four of them are bound together by the three truckers they met at the gas station earlier. They raided the group's belongings and had even found roommate's handgun. One of the men grabs Alexa and states his intentions to defile her. Suddenly, a blade comes flying out of the forest and kills him. Right then, Babyface emerges from the woods and starts finishing the two other men off. After killing them, Babyface goes to Alexa and grabs her chick neck. She distracts him by singing the same nursery rhyme that was sung at the beginning of the film. He then attempts to attack the rest of the group while Alexa runs away. Babyface chases after her, following her body's smell, and the others struggle to free themselves from their restraints. Once free, Tyler goes after Alexa to save her. Serena is scared and doesn't want Tyler to put himself in danger, but he still runs off after Alexa. He loses sight of her, but discovers a large farmhouse in the middle of the woods with someone sitting on the rocking chair on the front porch. Meanwhile, Serena and roommate also try to go after Tyler, but quickly realize that some peeping Tom is stalking them. They try to run, but Serena's hair gets stuck on a bush. Roommate gets the trucker's shotgun, but the rounds inside them are only blanks. He manages to get Serena's hair free, but Babyface suddenly appears. Roommate orders her to run, while he faces off with Babyface, determined to defend the lady with his muscles, but he gets shot in the shoulder. Serena hides from Babyface, but he uses Roommate's phone to call hers, and the loud ringtone gives away her location. He fires off another shot, but it narrowly misses her. She runs away screaming. On the other hand, Tyler creeps into the house, and finds many memorabilia commemorating the director's work inside. He enters another room, and sees newly developed film reels, he inspects one of them, and sees that it's actually footage of him and Alexa in the strip club. He runs inside another room, where Alexa is tied to the bed, naked. He frees her, and they go downstairs to the front door. Serena finds the house too, and asks the person in the wheelchair for help. What to her astonishment, the person is actually a corpse with its face cut off. At that moment, Tyler and Alexa step outside the house, and see Serena. However, Babyface is right behind them and he slashes Tyler's butt against the wall, making him slowly lose consciousness. Serena runs away, and Babyface turns to Alexa, who suddenly orders him to run after her. It is then revealed that Alexa is working with Babyface to lure Tyler and his friends to the house and kill them. What's more, she had paid the truckers and given them the shotgun with blanks, so they could terrorize Tyler and the others. Therefore, Alexa could set the scene for Babyface to kill them, like something out of a horror movie. Soon after, Serena hides under a parked car, and then silently runs toward the adjacent smokehouse. Inside are mummified bodies hanging from the ceiling, just like the fan theory that Tyler mentioned. The bodies are probably of the people who disappeared in the area, like the backpackers the trucker had told them about. She sees Babyface walking toward the smokehouse, so she quickly dives inside a barrel filled with human blood. Once he leaves, Serena emerges and leaves the smokehouse too. However, Babyface catches her again. Meanwhile, Tyler wakes up in a room with shelves stacked high with film canisters, labeled with the title, The Hills Run Red. In front of him is a projector screen. A man walks inside, and Tyler recognizes him as the director. The director reveals that everything filmed for the original cut of The Hills Run Red was actually true, starting with him murdering the actor they hired to play Babyface because his acting wasn't good enough. This is the reason why the cast disappeared after the movie was finished. They were actually dead after shooting their scenes. The director believes that his art is worth sacrificing everything to, and there was no line he wouldn't cross for his creative vision. The director further says that he impregnated the 13-year-old Alexa, and the son born of their incestuous union became the new babyface who terrorized everyone tonight.
The boy grew up, watching all the gruesome footage of the film, and copied the scene where Babyface had mutilated his face. After that, he took on the Babyface persona, and the director had found his new star for the scenes he will be filming. The Hills Run Red was never a fully completed film because over the years, the director and his son killed people and captured their deaths on film. At the same time, Servina regains consciousness inside a barn, where she and an injured roommate are kept by the sadistic Alexa. She is prepping a film camera to capture everything she will do to the two of them. Serena tries to fight back and insult Alexa. But she informs her that it will be Babyface, who will be having fun with her. The masked man emerges, grabs Serena, and takes her to the other room. Alexa straps roommate to a torture device and proceeds to stab him, while Babyface ties Serena's arms and legs and assaults her. The director wheels the wheelchair, where Tyler is bound to the barn. He gets angry when he sees that Alexa is shooting her own scenes, since the director wants total control over his movie. The father and daughter start to argue about their methods, and in anger, she rips off Babyface's mask to show the camera what the director had done. She also stabs roommate and kills him, trying to prove to her father that she has the guts to get bloody as he does. But the director gets irritated with her and shoots her. Babyface is enraged that his mother is murdered, and he retaliates by attacking the director. Tyler breaks free of his restraints and grabs the camera to encourage Babyface to finish him off. Serena also manages to get free from the other room, and she stabs Babyface with a metal bar. She and Tyler lock eyes, relieved that they are safe. But their nightmare is far from over. Somehow, Alexa is still alive, and she knocks Serena and Tyler out. When Tyler wakes up again, he is bound and gagged once more, with barbed wire wrapped around his body. It's a makeshift theater, and all around him are corpses, including roommate. Alexa appears and turns down the lights, forcing Tyler to watch her own cut of The Hills Run Red, published by Daniel CC Movie Channel. She thanks him for inspiring her to be her own director, and eclipse her father. She informs him that he will be the first one to see the new cut of the movie. The film starts, and Tyler finally gets what he came for. The raw and bloody footage of Babyface's killings in all their glory, including scenes of him and his friends. As he watches, he descends into madness, and slowly bleeds to death from his injuries. Once later, Alexa visits and imprisons Serena in the barn. Both of her hands are manacled, and she is still wearing the same dirty dress. It is revealed that Serena was impregnated by Babyface, and now she is about to give birth soon. Alexa leans close and presents the Babyface mask to Serena, asking her if the baby will like it. The movie ends with Alexa singing the same nursery rhyme to Serena's swollen belly. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.